So uh, it's really my pleasure to introduce you guys uh, to Don Barnes III. He's the president of Bell Tire. Um, how many people, is everybody here familiar with Bell Tire? All right, great. Any, any customers of Bell Tire? Look at that, look at that, I love it. So um, I, I will just, I will quickly share uh, my recent experience uh, with Bell Tire. So we, we got new tires uh, for my wife's Explorer uh, last Saturday, actually they got installed and we got a set of uh, Michelin uh, LTX DTs and her response was, it's like driving a new car. So if you're, if you're in, my, check it out. But uh, the, the thing I wanna share is one thing that impresses me with Bell Tire, uh, sorry, I'm gonna give you a quick little commercial. It's when, I, when you walk into Bell, it's like the, it's like reminds me of like the Apple Genius Bar of car service. Like you walk in, you're greeted, it's like, it's unbelievable experience there. So for those of you who raised your hand, you know what I'm talking about. And for those of you who didn't, go check it out. Uh, okay, so, and thank you, Don, for coming. So with that, uh, I'm gonna set up Don to talk about, um, reducing uh, labor costs using artificial intelligence. So, morning, everybody. Uh, appreciate you having, uh, having me out to uh, Ann Arbor uh, to be able to talk about something that's so sexy uh, like tires and hourly labor, right? I mean, I know we're, we're excited to kind of really dive in with that. So really quick, one, um, I love seeing the, all of the hands go up, you know, uh, people being familiar with Bell Tire. I was even more excited to see all of the customers uh, who continue to shop with us. So first, I want to thank everybody for their business. Uh, I, I truly mean that. And um, the people that didn't raise, raise their hand, give us a shot. We'd love the opportunity to earn your business. So I'm going to keep that sales pitch going. So people that uh, aren't familiar with Bell Tire, Bell Tire, we've been around since 1922. So we're fast approaching our 100-year anniversary. We just opened our 120th location uh, actually late last week. So that was a great milestone for us. Um, and, you know, we have the privilege to have, you know, just about 2,500 team members uh, be able to wear, you know, Tire Man on his chest uh, to be able to serve, um, you know, all, all of you guys in, in all different areas. A little bit about me. Um, like Jason said, I'm, I'm the president and chief tire guy at Bell Tire. But more importantly, um, you know, I'm a proud Michigan State alumni. And so coming into enemy territory, uh, I'm excited. So with that, uh, go green. Go green. There we go. So uh, I was worried that, you know, I was either going to get the go green, go white chat, or I was going to get tarred and feathered on the way out. Uh, either way, again, I really appreciate uh, having uh, myself and Bell Tire here to kind of talk about that. So, to, let's let's kind of I'm going to kind of paint the picture of kind of um, you know how this all started. You know we are in the I look at really not the tire business but the customer service business. And you know when Ben was speaking earlier about really you know engaging humans, um, you know that's what we do. We we have humans taking care of, of other humans. And the reason why people come to Bell Tire is because they have some sort of problem. And so what we, we have the privilege of is really being that moment in time during the day where we get to make that person's day better. Because I know everyone that walks into our stores, they're not excited to buy new tires, not excited to get a tire rotation, not excited to get an oil change or whatever it may be. It's, it's, it's a need. A good business model, it's, you know, it, it's a need, not a want. And so... You know, historically, what we did is in order to deliver great customer service and experience, which I think all of you had experience who raised their hands, you know, we had always erred on the side of, you know, let's make sure we have enough staff and make sure we have enough people to be able to take care of that customer. So a few years ago, as we've been continuing to grow, you know, I... It felt that labor just felt too high, right? And I, you know, I specifically put, you know, felt, right? It was, it was gut, it was intuition. How much? I don't know. Is it real? I don't know. It just feels like it, whether it be we're, you know, in our retail stores and at times maybe some people are standing around, other times not working. Um, you know, in retail business, it's sporadic. When are people going to come in? You know, we often look at what we do similar to an emergency room, right? You don't know what's walking going to walk through the ER. And anybody that's ever worked retail, as soon as you uh, you know are ready for break and want to take a bite of your sandwich, that's when all the customers come in. And so being able to try to understand the flow of when customers are going to come in is highly unpredictable, as or as we thought. And so what we wanted to do is okay if we have if we know that or feel that our labor is too high, how do we work in a way to where 
we can redeploy the, those labor dollars, those labor hours, of the, really the humans, in a way that's more productive for them, but more importantly, be able to deliver even a better experience to our customers so we can get them out quickly as, as we can. So, you know, something that, you know, we face, uh, you know, in our business and, and really most retail is, is really just kind of the recency bias, right? So, you know, whether we have, you know, a great promotion, this is kind of a quote that, um, you know, I use in, in other internal meetings is, you know, this promotion, you know, was the best last year. You know, we got to have lots and lots of people there to take care of our customers. And lots and lots is, is true, but, you know, what's that point of diminishing returns, right? I mean, there, there are certain things that, regardless of how busy we are, we're not going to be able to just cram so much through. You know, we do get throughput issues. We do have capacity limits on, on how many vehicles and how much stuff we can work at any given time. So, you know, we have, we have uh, you know, humans thinking about, okay, well, Okay, this is this is great, but you know I got to have a lot of people. Or you know what, you know this last promotion didn't do so well, so I'm not going to need that. And so we have you know these biases and really these these um, you know thinking of of our store personnel on either whether we need something or we don't. And with 120 locations, as you can imagine, you have 120 different ways of thinking on what's the right way to do it. And something that we've been so privileged about is that the people that are running our locations, you know, have been with us for 10, 15, 20 plus years. So they have a lot of experience. There's a lot of intuition. And a lot of times they're right. And what we're looking to do is not to challenge um, and say, hey, what we've been doing for a long time has been wrong. But how can we just tweak the system, make it a little bit better? How can we tweak the system to just be a little bit more efficient for our customers. How can we tweak the system to optimize what we're doing so we're, we're really deploying our labor force in a way that's overall more productive? And so, you know, the, the, the problem, kind of restated, is that we neither have people on the clock really not being productive and, and underutilizing, you know, the labor dollars that we're paying, or you know, we would, you know, not be able to staff properly and we'd have customers waiting for vehicles uh, getting done and, and being understaffed. And being understaffed, we know the, the single most important thing in delivering a great experience to customers' business is getting their vehicles in and out quickly, right? So if we want to make sure that we can quickly get your vehicles in and out, then we said, well, we got to have people, right? It's just, let's just start have more people, worry about it later, it's a cost of doing business, and we'll make it up on the sales. Sales kind of cures all, I think Ben was talking about, and, and it's true. But at the same time, you know, we want to make sure that we can truly be efficient, truly optimize, you know, those, those uh, dollars being used. So again, we can continue to deliver better experience to our customers. So again, the solution, um, you know, partnered with RxA. We've been we've been a client of Domo's as well for the last couple of years, and knew that hey, let's let's look at some of these kind of you know pre-built semi-custom solutions that we have uh, to be able to look at kind of what we do and try to predict the retail business on when customers are going to come in. And so um, you know, again, it's you know, try to say we're going to we know exactly how many customers are going to come in at any specific half hour, a certain day of the week week of the month, month of the year, based on, you know, geography, whether it be Ann Arbor, Lansing, Chesterfield, wherever, uh, it really kind of, you know, hit the company and say, there's, there's no way, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, that stuff that Google does, they got billions of dollars and there's robots. How is this going to really work for us? You know, we're people working with people, managing people. So how does, how does that really work? How is this really going to, you know, work for us? And so, um, you know, what we did is we gave a whole bunch of information to RxA and, and um, you know, Ben, we kind of threw it in the black box because, you know, we're tire salespeople. Uh, you know, we know how to sell and, you know, we'll let the system kind of do its thing. So the focus, again, really was, how, you know, making sure that we can deploy uh, a pre-built solution um, that really, truly fits our business. And again, w looking in and, and working in the service business, that's, that's kind of how I look at our business, um, is how can we optimize our workforce to deliver even better customer service, but reduce dollars um, in a way. And, and in doing so, there was pushback. There was apathy. There was all of the things that Ben talked about earlier, because you know, we had people saying, wait, a computer is going to tell me how to run my store? How's that? I've been doing this for 20 years. I, I got it, Don. I got it. And so all of the things that have been talked about was absolutely true. And so then it, then it really became, any movie buffs out there, any movie fans? Yeah, a few. Anybody see Days of Thunder? 
Anybody? So there's a particular scene that I like to use, and it's and it's it's just, uh, it's even better because of, of the scene. So uh, Tom Cruise, you know, he's a race car driver, and you know he drives with instinct, he drives with passion, and he can whip around that track really fast. And there's a point in the movie where Robert Duvall's talking to him about you know how to specifically drive that race car. Right? We got to go fast, but we also got to make sure we we don't burn out our tires. And so there was a point where Tom Cruise went out and get, drove 50 laps the way that he wanted to drive, and when he comes in, you can see the tires all burn up. And then Robert Duvall said, okay, now drive 50 laps my way and let's see what happens. And so after Tom Cruise drove 50 laps the Robert Duvall way, you know, it, it fought instinct. It was a little different than what he was used to. Not only did he, you know, uh, keep his tires uh, lasting longer, but he was able to go faster. And so I like to use that analogy with our team. It was you know, we had guys running our stores that drove the car like Tom Cruise. They drove it on instinct. They got around the track real fast. Very high, high performing individuals, very high performing stores. But if we could tweak it just a little bit in a way to where we can drive smarter and act smarter, not just work harder, then we can be more efficient. We can add dollars to the bottom line. We can take savings, redeploy it in higher wages, whatever it may be, in order to truly operationalize, um, you know, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So again, the, the, the business initiative is, you know, we want to reduce bottom line expenses. Um, and again, the problem kind of restated again is, you know, we have employees on the clock that truly aren't being utilized the right way. Either we have not enough employees, which are leading to longer uh, wait times to customers, or we have too many employees that are understaffed at the, to where we're, we're not uh, being as productive as we can. So what we looked at from, for just from a measure standpoint is, from a utilization, we kind of had a benchmark, and, and one thing I love about our company is we have data coming out of our eyeballs. So we can we look at it at data all different ways, and Dome has been a great partner to be able to uh, kind of slice that data and make it very easily um, accessible and digestible for us to manage our business. So the, the measurement really was kind of our hourly uh, hourly labor utilization, and what we thought would happen is then we'd reduce uh, labor expenses with with really two caveats. So right is you can reduce labor expenses, but if you do it at the expense of sales, that's not good, not sustainable. And if you do it at the expense of delivering a great experience, that's not good either. So really the, the two caveats and, and table stakes were is we can't, you know, we can't lower sales. We and, and and certainly we can't deliver a poor experience to our customers. Cause if any of those two happen, then we gotta scrap this and we gotta rethink about this the other way. So what we did is, you know, we kind of assessed everything and we knew that there are going to be fixed variables and, uh, or I'm sorry, fixed things and, and, and variables that are going to go into um, how we go about, you know, developing schedules, de de developing how we want to redeploy our workforce. So, you know, the size of our stores are fixed. The amount of bays that we have are fixed. The days of the week are fixed. The hours that we open, you know, are fixed. Uh, what's variable, though, are when people are working throughout the day, how often they're working, when they're kind of punching in, punching out, how, uh, how many people are we opening the store with, how many people are we having coming in the swing shift, how many people are we closing with. And again, in the past, a lot of it was, well, we just need three people to open because that's the way we've been doing it. And we got a couple more people coming in, you know, a few hours later, and then we got to close with three people and, you know, we'll be fine if we just kind of follow that schedule. And for the most part, it worked, right? It kind of got us, you know, I'd say really close and we've been able to do a good job with that. But again, how do we just get a little bit better? And that's a philosophy that we've always operated at Bell Tires. You know, how do we just get a little bit better uh, today than we were yesterday, you know, just 1% better a little bit of time because over the course of several days and months, there's going to be a huge disparity to where we went from, you know, doing really well to being great. And so when we look at how we kind of assessed um, the things that we had is, okay, yep, there are, fixed, there are fixed things that we can't change. There are variables that we can change, primarily the amount of people that we have staff at the store, hourly people staff at the store, as well as um, you know, what time do we want them coming in? And in our business, which I'm, I'm excited, it's, it's right around here, is there, you know, weather is, is a huge factor in, in, in how well or how busy we can be. So the fact that winter's coming, um, no pun intended, when you look around, you get House Targaryen and House Lannister, I wasn't you know, supposed to do that, but uh, uh, with winter coming, you know, we 
tend to ramp up. And right now is the perfect time to say, hey, well, we got to get seasonal employees. We got to ramp up staff. We got to be ready. Well, if anybody remembers, you know, locally remembers December a year ago, we had zero accumulated inches of snowfall. And in the tire business, if it doesn't snow, you're not selling any tires, specifically in December. So, you know, last year was a great way to where we were able to see, you know, by bringing in uh, different external factors, you know, specifically weather, we're able to see and, and really quickly ramp down um, uh, employee personnel when we saw that the, the winter was un, unseasonally warm and we weren't going to have the type of winter we were. So these were kind of all the different factors that we looked in. Um, other factors, again, I love this slide. I mean, I think everyone out there other than me, uh, not so much, but you know, you, you look at this, you have these, you know, these giant money makers right here. Um, I'm sorry, potholes. Uh, and you know, you can see, you know, there, there's snow and wet and this and that. And just kind of going back earlier when I was talking about recency bias is, you know, uh, two years ago, when we had a great winter, it's easy to believe that, oh, yeah, we're going to have the same winter. Yeah, we got to staff up, you know, but what we forget is, okay, well, what happened in the spring with potholes? Are there other factors that we're not really remembering from even, you know, forget about 12 months ago. It could have been a few months ago. Uh, did promotions change? Did managers change? Whatever it may be. So the fact that we have to now incorporate other factors, um, you know, again, like these money, money makers in... It just makes the whole process even more complex. And so it's something that historically, you know, humans can't do. I mean, we can, we can kind of hold in our brain just a few things. And then uh, for me, a little less than that, but, you know, a few things to where then, you know, we're just relying on, on instinct and gut. So after, after we, we kind of gave RxA all of our data and went through the machine, what the initial assessment was is that almost half of the time um, we weren't staffed properly. Almost half of the time. And that could have been, been overstaffed, understaffed. And about 30% of that time of, of overall the total assessment was we were overstaffed. So we knew there was an opportunity to take the 29% of the time where we were overstaffed, redeploy it in, in, in a way to where we would have been understaffed, We'll, we'll then be able to deliver better customer experience and then in theory, be able to yield more sales. And so um, some of the pushback that we got from some store managers specifically is they're working with these tire installers. You know, they have relationships with. And so to say, hey, we're cutting your hours, Joe, by six, cause it can, by six hours because the computer told me to, that's not going to sit so well with Joe, right? Well, he's, he's got to make a living, so now my hours are just getting cut. Um, and the, the, the issue could have been, you, you know, turnover goes up, it's harder to retain. And so the factor for us was, we can, let's, how do we take these savings, redeploy it in a way to where everybody wins? So what the, the another hypothesis, another outcome we're hoping for is we could take these savings, then redeploy in higher wages. And by redeploying higher wages, we now have people that are and they're happy, they're making more money, but they're also working, being productive while they're there. I don't care if you're working in the back of the tire store, you're working in an office or wherever, if you're sitting around twiddling your thumb, it's not fun. People by nature, we want to add value, we want to contribute, we want to be productive. We want to know that when you know I went to work, I went home, I was productive today, and that I added value into whatever I was doing. And so if we can not only just you know help with higher wages, but also just from an internal sentiment standpoint, know that people are... Uh, contributing and being more productive, there's going to be even other unintended consequences that will, that will help us do that. So from a modeling perspective, um, again, I'm a tire sales guy. So Jason and, and, and John, and everybody else, I mean, this, they told me this is what we did. Um, and, you know, so I can read the slide, you know, distributed random forest is a powerful classification regression tool. When given a set of data, DRF generates forest uh, classified or, or regression tree. So I, there are way, way, way more smarter people in this room than I am, uh, and I'm sure you get that, but that's kind of what we did. Uh, but more importantly was the the tool that, the, the kind of the end output was something that even I could understand, right? So it was a simple CSV file that basically said, okay, Don, at 7.30 in the morning, you need to have two tire installers, and at 8, have another one come in, and at 10, bring the fourth guy in. And it was a simple numbers game on how many people we should be staffed at every kind of half hour increment. And for, so as a store manager, really what we wanted to do was make their jobs easier, right? I mean, their jobs and, and really is to deliver the best customer service that we can 
by solving hopefully all your needs, being able to qualify you. And what we don't want them to do is having spend un any unnecessary time creating schedules or doing administrative work that's truly not adding value to helping our customers. And so, um, you know, the theory was, is, hey, let's, let's kind of take our hands off the wheel. Um, you know, we're still sitting in the driver's seat, so it's not truly autonomous, but let's take the hands off the wheel and let's kind of see, you know, how this goes. And from a scheduling standpoint, really agnostic who works when, but more of how many people we want to have deployed about every 30 minutes or so. And so we did that. And, you know, it took, it took a little bit of time. Um, we ran an eight store pilot and after about 60 days, we, we kind of deployed it throughout the whole company and the feedback really after the first 30 days, 45 days, or what you see on the screen, right? You know, you, you, we haven't really been running behind. Um, it really doesn't seem like I have any extra bodies anymore, or I don't really don't feel like uh, I'm short-staffed. Um, you know, their manager's been doing this a long time, Say, I'm, I'm really trying to follow this as much as I can. And the thing that we did is we gave the store manager and the people the autonomy to either follow it or not. But still, always referencing the example of the Days of Thunder uh, example on, hey, you can drive, you can drive your car 50 laps you want, but just give us 50 laps to see what that does. And if you can drive it better than we can, do it. It's all about how do we how do we optimize how quickly we get her on the track um, while b burning the least amount of energy and prolong the life of our tires. And you know, other examples, you know, I think it's spot on. So. We knew that this was working, and we knew that just through you know qualitative feedback on the stores that this was working. We we're excited about it, but but being in business, it's always like, okay, great, but what does it mean to me, right? Meaning, how is that truly helping our business, and how is that helping me again maintain sales? How does that help me uh, from a customer service standpoint, and what is it doing to my bottom line, right? If I'm if I'm implementing this, but not making any more money or not helping top line sales or not delivering, then kind of what's the point of doing this exercise? And the exciting thing is, you know, over the course since really 2017, we've been able to reduce our hourly labor costs by 14%. We've been able to increase same store sales by just over 2%. We were able to maintain our net promoter score of 75. Um, and I'm going to tutor on home for a little bit, but anybody that is familiar with net promoter score Really, anything over 70 is, is world class. So, be able to maintain a world class um, net promoter score of 75 and higher was something that was really important to us. And then, for all the business people out there, we're able to increase same store EBITDA by 8.4% to improve profitability during this whole exercise. And, and, and in doing so, we are also able to increase hourly wages by 9.2% by redeploying some of those savings into you know, higher wages. And what that did helped create better retention, help people get more excited and motivated, not the only thing, but it felt that everybody, they, they were able to see how this system, how this artificial intelligence machine learning truly affected them. By implementing this tool, we're able to you know, uh, show the you know, $12, $13 tire installers that, yeah, this is how it helps me directly. And this is how it helped the salespeople. And this is how it helped the manager. And this is how it helped uh, Bell Tire in general. So um, again, I, I appreciate you, you having me here and uh, being able to talk about, I'll say, the true practical, practical use of AI and, and machine learning. Um, because it was you know, a couple years ago to where you know, we as a company, we, we knew that it could be a solution, but again, you know, I, I, whether I attend the conferences and I, I hear, you know, speakers, it's like, okay, that's great, but how does that really work for me, right? How does that, how do I really operationalize it? And uh, I, I'm proud to be able to kind of stand up here and show, you know, this is how you're able to operationalize it uh, and really simplify what it can do into something that's so important um, on the human human interaction. So with that, I, I appreciate that and welcome any questions. Uh, thank you. So I'm curious about this human element. Um, did you get any feedback from any of your um, locations and the managers there, especially maybe ones who were doing a good job before of keeping their um, employees uh, not over or under? Um, did you get any feedback from after employing this about saying, you know, oh, you know, I, I was doing a really good job but I wasn't taking into account blank that was, you know, in the, in the system here. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. So, you know, just like anything else, um, you have, you know, people that do kind of really good job and then, you know, different quartiles, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and we had a few individuals that were actually managing, you know, kind of really tight, almost, I don't want to say better than the system, but what we were, what we were seeing is 
when there were you know different um, material events, whether it be a sale or promotion, a snowstorm or, or something like that, that's where we were able to be more efficient and optimize in those stores. Um, you know, just a normal course of business Monday through Saturday, you know, they might have done a really good job, but what they weren't able to do is be able to kind of predict the business that would be coming in through some external factors, as well as how well we did maybe uh, from a year ago, you know, did the promotion change. So there were some stores that did a really good job that were able to benefit from it through different material events that happened throughout the year that you're not going to think of and remember um, if you're building the schedule for next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just wondering about the the sort of horizon and cadence of your forecasting because I mean, it looked like a weekly forecast you had up yeah. there. But you know, what sort of 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 uh, distance ahead are people looking in terms of saying, okay, well, here's what the staffing is going to be in my shop for two weeks from now, three weeks from now? Because you can't, obviously you can't just like Monday morning say, here's your staffing for the week. Right. No, so, so yeah. So what kind of horizon? Yeah, so we were we were getting we were getting the the output from from RXA um, really about two days before we needed to kind of publish schedules. So we were publishing schedules, um, you know, by the close of business Thursday for the following week. So we were getting we were getting the output um, kind of Tuesday Wednesday uh, in order to set the schedule. And and at times, you know, again, it was kind of slight tweaking on a store by store basis. Uh, and once the manager got comfortable in receiving that output and being able to set the schedule, you know, they, not only were they able to cut down on, on hours, but they were able to cut down on how much time they were going about thinking about, um, you know, making the schedule. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, you said it took a while to implement, you know, figure out the models and implement things. So estimated how long does it take? Say, okay, we signed the contract with RXA, we build the models. Now we're making recommendation to the stores. Um, is that a year or two? No, no, no. I mean, we were we were getting recommendations the first week, and um, you know, so the information that we gave is we gave every single transaction of every single store for the last five years, and every single time clock entry of every single store for the last five years. So then we could kind of marry up. Okay, what was the work? What was the the labor being uh, in in store versus what was the customer coming in? And then through different predictive analytics, we're able to then forecast when we would see. Um, uh, customers coming in into our shop and then try to overlay um, the schedule on that. In the beginning, when I say it took a little time, it was two things. One, the system had to learn uh, based on the inputs that our managers were making. So the, the system could recommend a schedule. At the same time, we gave the, the manager the ability to you know, use it, not use it, use a portion of it. And so it, it was kind of twofold. One, the managers had to get comfortable with the output because it was different. And different usually is bad. It seems bad, but it's just different. So it was kind of two phases, right? You have the fact that it's different, um, and you have you know uh, adoption of the managers doing it. But then also you just have the system being able to continue to learn with real information rather than just past information. So I would say within sixty days, sixty to ninety days, you know the the outputs that were being generated from RXA to what we're using was really tight. Yeah, um, I was curious if you could talk at all about if there was any like validation of the data. So it's this RxA is making these predictions on how much labor you'll need according to some ordering it's predicting. Did you do any like retro look at did with the orders that we had predicted for the late much labor meet what we actually got? That kind of like validation stuff. Um, not really, only because you 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 don't know what you would have staffed if you didn't follow. So it was more of um, are we going to, it was really kind of at the discretion of the mandate, right? Are we going to truly trust the system of what it's, you know, given us versus not? And so that's where you would see stores that were more quickly to adopt were able to see more realized savings initially than, than ones that didn't. So that was really, it was really more of just a comparative set amongst a peer group that was able to pilot versus having a, um, you know, running a store without it, running a store with it. It was just more of how are they, re how are they relating to, to their peer group? So not not road conditions, uh, but weather. So we were able to pull in um, uh, weather information that are specific 
to every single location. So, you know, we, we have four stores in Ann Arbor. It's the weather is the same, you know, materially the same within those four. So we're pulling in weather information for around every single location. And that was one of the factors that was then contributing to uh, staffing needs, depending on, again, prior sales, uh, run rate, you know, previously, what the weather's going to do, knowing that that external factor is going to materially change either favorably or unfavorably, depending on uh, how cold and snowy it is or not in the wintertime. Uh, and so Yes, that was a huge factor in terms of how um, those outputs were being generated for us. And part of this exercise, if you have to find the identified parameters or drivers or what is making sense of the existing uh, parameters, just in a more system effect. Can you, can you repeat that question? Is was this uh, more about identifying additional business drivers or, or additional parameters that will uh, affect your outcome versus um, using the same parameters but in a more uh, programmatic, uh, systemic fashion? Yeah, we felt that there was um, ways to uh, drive additional sales through this by, again, uh, deploying labor in a way that was most efficient and, and optimized. So it, this was somewhat of a cost-saving exercise. But at the same time, it was a way to where we knew that we would be uh, be putting ourselves in a better position to capitalize on on increased revenue by having the people at the right place at the right time. So you know, almost I don't want to say look at our people like inventory, but it's it's really just in time from a human capital standpoint to be able to deliver that. And if by doing that, then the hypothesis would would we should see a lift in sales, and we should deliver better customer experience because we have people staffed at the right time. Uh, to be able to do that. So that was kind of the thought process about it. Well, this is a lot more than three questions. Um, hi, Don. I, hi. Okay. Uh, I really enjoy your talk. And I'm just uh, curious about how did you and Jason agree to do this? This is very progressive. It's like a new technology applied to traditional mm -hmm. industry. I'm wondering how that process looked like. How did he convince you to do this or you came to him? Yeah, so, you know, um, well, one, Jason, the team, that, well, you know, the work speaks for itself. So um, that was easy. The, the, the idea came from, you know, we have a, a mutual friend um, that was running something similar to um, the medical industry, right? Is how can we dis how can we um, uh, staff hospital waiting rooms or our nurses in a way uh, to help optimize, you know, patients coming into the ER? And forever, we kind of looked at our business as that, right? We have patients coming in, patients just happen to be their vehicle coming in, um, need needing to be diagnosed. Um, some things more severe than others, uh, but also these patients want to get in and out as quickly as we can and trying to then guess and predict when these types of patients are coming in and how often and how, you know, what type of expertise we need. It said, well, we can do that, right? That's kind of our business in a way. So if, if there's a model and a kind of a, a, a custom built solution for more the hospitals and medical field, why couldn't we take that solution, apply it to tires, really apply it to what we're doing? And, and I, I just try to simplify it. So, well, it's not really, it's not specific to hospitals. It's just more of how do you deploy your human capital in a way that's going to lead to best productivity and ultimately get people in out quick, right? I mean, if you're, if you're the hospital, you want to get out as quickly as you can and feel better, right? Well, if you come to Bell Tire, you want to get your flat taken care of, your rotation taken care of, your new tires put on in and out as quickly as you can, done right and safe, but get back to your everyday use. So it was more of just kind of thinking about our already pre-built solution and saying, hey, we can do that. You know, that would work for us. And, and Jason and I hooked up and said, hey, let's kind of take something you've already built and just read, you know, configure it to where it's, it's fit for Bell. And I'll just, I just want to add really quickly to that. Don, you get all the credit for this. So the, the real you, we were there for another meeting and the impetus was I was meeting with your CMO with Vivek and we were out. It happened to be the day of the eclipse, the big solar lunar eclipse, solar eclipse. We're out in the parking lot looking at it. You know, we all got our little glasses on and stuff. And then you spot me out there and just come, Jason, come here. 
I want to run this by you. Come here. Do you think you guys could do this? I mean, this really was your, you had, you had the vision for this and you grabbed us. So well, really you, you know, a blind squirrel so. finds a nut. Um, but it's, you know, the only way that it worked was because of, of something that was uh, kind of, I would say, in place that um, I kind of knew about. Um, and then just thought about the solution a different way and said, well, yeah, this is how it's used, but you could use the same technology, you know, and I'll say in the customer service business, uh, in a way to make sure that we're deploying our assets, in this case, our, our people, our human capital in a way that's going to be most efficient for them so that they continue to feel like they're adding, you know, value to their day by being productive. Uh, and if we can do it and reduce costs, and if we can do it while, you know, not, um, worsening, I don't say, while continuing to deliver great experience to our customers. And if we can take some of those savings and um, share it with our with our team, so then they're happier because now they're being more productive, now they're making more money. And they're, not, they're not feeling that I'm getting displaced by a computer. I mean, people still got to work on the cars, but I'm not being displaced, hours cut, we're not you know cutting heads, but just be more efficient, optimize it. Then, then we win as a company because we have a happier workforce that's making more money, that's being more productive. And more importantly, we have um, customers that are able to continue on with their day and get out and, and have the, the same type of great experience that they would be coming to our stores without even knowing what's going on in the background. Yep. Got to be more questions, come on. All right, so with the data that you had and that you handed off to RxA, did you guys on your side come up with all of the uh, different parameters that were necessary that you thought would help work in, in this data model? Or did you guys work with RxA, come together to, to that conclusion? Or Yeah, it was a very collaborative approach. So what RxA did was they were able to um, have us look at data in a different way than we traditionally did. And then what we did was kind of, you know, bring up certain things that happened on a store by store, you know, basis, like, you know, when the delivery truck shows up, right? So, you know, we usually you need, you know, someone to unload that truck. So if you have someone loading the truck, that's taking someone off the floor, which is taking someone off from helping, you know, customers. So being able to, you know, so, okay, well, the delivery truck comes in between 11 and 12. We got to highlight that window knowing that um, regardless of what it says, we always have to have minimum amounts of uh, kind of employees there. So we looked at every single thing that went into kind of the operation of the business and said, hey, we just can't run this through spreadsheets and computers, we got to take that, but then we got to be able to operate and look at really what's the normal flow of how we operate. Because what we didn't want to do is intrude on that business. We didn't want to make it harder for the team to be able to operate. The whole idea of, of I'll say, my job, my purpose, and, and my team's purpose is to make it easier for our team to deliver great experience to the customers and sell more stuff. And so the whole thing was, how do we, how do we make sure that it's um, it's not intrusive in the way, but also thinking about all the little details that go on and run an entire store that maybe we're not thinking about as we're trying to build uh, these predictive analytics. So, so you would try that over time, like, hey, here's the data set. And that's, yeah. Oh, we forgot about the We forgot about this, and we tweak it a little bit, yeah. And, and, and when I say collaborative, it was collaborative not just with, can I say, my team and Jason, but it was being collaborative with, you know, the, the 8 to 10 stores that were piloting. And so, you know, we specifically chose certain stores um, on geography because we were, we were concerned that, um, you know, is geographics going to be, you know, materially, you know, different? Uh, but also we wanted to make sure that, you know, we were partnering with store managers that were going to give real feedback um, that are, you know, uh, quick to adopt new technologies to make their life easier. Again, everything that Ben said earlier in terms of how humans kind of think about this, I mean, I was laughing because I'm like, yes, that's, that's what, that was us. That, that was us. And so being able to kind of select people uh, to pilot that um, that would have influence with their peer group was was uh, appropriate too because once they saw hey not only are, are these ten stores doing it that are respect in the community that are you know have you know good experience but they're actually able to make more money because they're reducing costs and improving sales it wasn't hard to say guys you want to try this you want to try fifty uh, doing it our way and um, it was a quick to adoption so again the implementation was really. 30, 60 days after that of, of kind of tweaking out, um, you know, how well we were, we were tightening up on it. Any more questions? Again, I thank everybody for, for having, uh, having me out here um, and, and take away. And, uh, and again, just to, just to conclude, go green. All right, thank you. <laughs>